Good morning, everybody. Here we are, another wonderful opportunity the good Lord's blessed us with to be in his word and what a blessing it is of that so that we may get our dose of it um, each and every morning throughout the week. This morning, I want to uh, talk again. Last couple of days, we've been looking at this concept. Is there, Does God still have something special uh, for the nation of Israel, meaning in the fleshly um, uh, nation of Israel over in the Middle East? Um, we've noticed in the last couple of days, we've, we've looked at two um, extensive contexts that just tells us, no, is that they lost it. And uh, we noticed um, yesterday of how Jesus wanted to take them under their wings, like a mother hen, and they wouldn't have anything to do with it. They said, well, your house is desolate. Now, there's this goes way back to a promise or a condition uh, that God placed on Israel. Um, he kept his word. We noticed that a couple of days ago, is that <clears throat> there in Joshua, says not one thing that the Lord had promised failed. He, he kept his end of the bargain. But he also put a condition upon them if they was going to keep it. God kept his end of the word, but it was entirely up to the nation of Israel whether they would keep it or not. All right, And we find here at the, towards the end of the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy chapter 28 and 29 and 30, we find here Moses is talking to the generation that came out of the wilderness. Um, their parents and grandparents were not allowed to go in because they didn't believe the spies. So they died in the wilderness. Now this generation is getting ready to go in. And Moses is reminding them of this very fact. He reminds them in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and in verse 15, he, he says this, he says, But it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. See, it's passages like this that's just, you know, these pre millennialists and we got to back Israel and all these other kind of folks. You know, uh, the, I don't know, somehow, maybe, maybe they've never read these things in their Bible, so they're just doing it deliberately. I, I don't know, either way, it comes to the same place. They're mistaken when it comes to the Bible. God never promised them unconditionally that they would keep this land for all um, of eternity. We have found for the last three days passages that puts conditions on these things. He says, if you are not careful to do exactly what I say, he says, I'm going to curse you, not bless you. And he goes on for much, well, for the rest of the, uh, of the 28th chapter in so many ways. He says, verse 16, cursed shall you be. Seven, and cursed shall be. 18, cursed shall you be. 19, cursed shall you be. And he's going to spend upon them cursing and confusion, rebuke in verse 20. 21, the Lord will make the plague cling to you. Uh, 22, the Lord will strike you. Uh, and so on and on and on. It goes in this, they're very specific things. That God said, I'm not going to bless you. I, I'm going to drop the hammer on you. And so all of the Bible is truth. But we have to handle it correctly. You know, he goes on. You know, we, we picked up there in verse 16, read down a few verses there. And he goes on down. And in, and in verse 47, he picks up. He says, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart for the abundance of everything. He said, well, this is why all this is going to happen. That's why I'm going to drop the hammer on you. That's why uh, you're going to lose this land. That's why you're going to serve your enemies. Why? Because, uh, not because of the promise I made, but because you disobeyed me. He fulfilled the land promise that he made to Abraham in Genesis, the 12th chapter. He fulfilled that. And he hasn't fulfilled it at this point. But as they're getting ready to go in the land, he said, I'm going to keep my word. And we know it in the end of Joshua, that's exactly what it is. Not one good thing that the Lord say or promise failed. He goes on in Deuteronomy 28 and verse 63. 
says, and it shall be that just as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good and multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and bring you to nothing. And you shall be plucked from off the land which you possess. That is pretty clear. That's not, that's not hard to understand, is it? He said, I'm, it is, it, it, with the gladness and the joy that I had in, in blessing you, you go and start disobeying me? He said, that, I'm going to have that same, same anger against you as I had in blessing you. He said, I'm going to take you off this land. He didn't say you're going to keep it. He said, I'm going to take you off of it. Why? Because they disobey. Verse 64. Then the Lord will scatter you among the peoples from one end of the earth to the other. And there you shall serve other gods, which neither you nor your fathers have known, wood and stone. So this idea, I mean, it's just not biblical. I know where it comes from. Um, over there in the books of Zechariah and, and Haggai and, and the like, uh, when they come out of Judea or Babylonian captivity, they try to take those books and those passages and apply them to today, but it doesn't apply to today. It applies to the generation that those prophets were writing to as they were coming out of that captivity. They did rebuild the temple. They did restore uh, sacrifices and whatnot. All right? But that doesn't have anything to do with, the, with today. The only hope that Israel, fleshly Israel has today is the same hope from everyone else. As Peter wrote or said in, in Acts the third, third chapter, you need to repent. You need to repent and submit to the Prince of Peace that their forefathers had murdered. That's the only hope for them. It's the only hope for us. There's no physical uh, land uh, promise or blessing that's uh, for, for the Jews today. They lost it. He said, I'm going to make an end of you. I'm going to pluck you off. Your house is desolate. The only hope they have now is the same hope as you and I have. Need to repent, submit to Christ, and obey God. So does God have some special plans for Israel today? Can't find it in the Bible without manipulating and perverting Scripture. There's your dose of God's Word today. Hope we'll do you some good. As always, we got to go back to the Bible, and we have to handle it correctly and consistently. Hey, hope you all have a great day. Lord willing, we'll get back tomorrow, and we'll get us another dose of God's Word. We'll see you then.